Alright, well day 13 of our urban versus bush survival mission and I've come out of the scrub um, but it's still eating the bush tucker. We've gathered a whole heap of different things and we've come to our friend's cafe in Kilkeel. We've got my mate James here. He's come along. How you going buddy? How you going James? Yeah, really Very good. Well. Thanks. Um, what, what do you guys, what do, you guys do here? Well, uh, me and my girls here. Come in here girls. Come in here. Come in here. Um, we've set up a little cafe down here which sort of um, specialises in a uh, special, tasty, organic locally grown, locally sourced food and, um, and really good coffee. Yeah, we've been growing lots of our own vegetables and fruits and nuts and what else have we got there? Lots of herbs up at our own um, vegetable garden up the road. And we're, oh, we're always trying to focus on uh, what's local and definitely really interested in um, using the local environment and, and letting that show through in our food where we're from and where we're, where we're about. So, yeah. Awesome, and you use a bit of bush tucker. What kind of bush tucker have you used in here? At the moment we've got Warrigal Greens which are growing wild up at Kilcare Beach which is our local beach so... I couldn't find any of the side of them. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we fun. love Warrigal Greens though. Yeah. We, we use it a lot in... Um, we would, normally we would use spinach a lot and yeah. since we discovered Warrigal Greens we've been using that as a spinach so and, we and steam in it. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. In New Zealand they call it kohihi and uh, they feed it to their elders which is a good one for you guys to tell your elders because it's got na uh, natural anti-inflammatory uh, oh, properties really? oh, in it. Okay. Well, I'm going to put a bit of a challenge to you guys today, if you don't mind. Um, I've, I've brought a whole heap of this stuff from the scrub, and I've also got some weeds as I came into um, into civilization here. I've got um, I've got Acacia longifolia subspecies Sephori. Okay, and there's actually a toxin in the outside skin, but we can eat the skin on the inside, which is um, several times higher in protein than red meats. These little seeds you've got here, but a uh, bit of time, bit of time for processing, so I might not worry about those. Also, very very high in calcium which is important. We've got farmers friends or Biden's Pelosa, the one that sticks to people's socks and tracky ducks and annoys a lot of people. Actually a native species. Uh, Joseph Banks identified this in 1770 from Salander Bay. Um, in uh, Lebanon they sell it in the fruit shops, they hang it up and sell it as a like a wild spinach. Uh, in Africa they use it to treat rheumatism, arthritis and that sort of thing. In China they use it to treat conjunctivitis, earaches. I've used it to treat conjunctivitis really really effectively and of course it's edible so it's a really really good tucker. Got that one. Got some seaweed. They say that all species of seaweed are edible. I just watch out whatever the experts say because there's a lot of different experts saying a lot of different things. I do know uh, once this gets a little bit old, okay, it can actually become toxic. Okay, so you've got to be careful when it comes to the seaweeds. But while they're nice and young and healthy, they're generally okay. We've got some native sarsaparilla here, which um, if you don't mind, guys, I wouldn't mind a tea out of that. Maybe yeah. with maybe with this wild lemon we found out there, which is an introduced species, but I'm not going to discriminate against it. And also this Alpinia corulia, or native ginger. We'll get some of that in that tea, which would oh, be... Yeah, which yeah. would be really lovely. We've also got this one, which... Um, have you guys used the bulrush before, the, no. the typha? It looks like a massive spring onion, doesn't it? It, it does. Leak or yeah. Quite a leak, yeah. So you've got all this section in here. You've got to get it when it's fairly yeah. young. Um, when it's old, it toughens up and you can't use it. The books rave about using the root system as a food. Yeah. And the root system isn't bad as food if you cook it really, really well. You can eat all that starchy stuff yeah. on the inside. It helps your teeth to go quite white too, actually. It's, it's amazing. So it sort of bleaches them. But this section in here is the best part. And you guys can do the taste test. Yes. Tell me what you reckon. Mmm. That's really good. Oh, I find the taste of an onion. It's so different. Yeah, it's like, like a... Cucumber, yeah. I didn't want to say anything. Wow. That's wow. what I call bush yeah. cucumber, and you can just chop that up and oh, put that in the salad. Just, so yeah, we got yeah. all of that. We got Where this. Where did you find that? Jack? Uh, got that one just up the end. There was a, there's a bit of a freshwater spring maybe oh, yeah. up that way, and I went and checked so up there to make the sure. Yeah, it grows in water. It's an aquatic plant. Wow, so it's a good one. All right, so we've got all that. That'll uh, that'll make up probably the majority of our that meat might today. Be really good in a salad. Yeah. It'll be really really good in a salad. Also, we've got these ones here, which is. Um, from the Syathia or Dicksonia, I'm not sure, it's a rough tree oh, fern. And we need to get rid of these hairy parts, these hairy sections, because they yeah. can cause throat closure. Um, it's a bit like fiberglass, that section in there, so we want to get rid of all that. And um, you can either cook that, fry it, and stir fry it. Um, here's the edible tucker inside there. It's really, really slimy, but it's um, nevertheless good food, but I'll give it a really good cook. When these open up, 
and they start to get branchlets coming off the side like that, it becomes carcinogenic. It's also what we call an anthelmintic. It expels intestinal worms. So in a survival situation, uh, parasites could end up drawing a lot of the nutrients out of your body and fighting you uh, for your survival as they, as they take from you. So um, this could come in very, very handy. And it does work. I won't explain exactly how I know it works. It's a little bit gross, but it does work really, really well. <laughs> so we've got a bit more of that there. We've got these bush potatoes. But there wasn't much around. I had to dig for about <laughs> half an hour for these measly little yams here. But they are very, very nutritious. They're a true yam. Uh, the African yam are from the same genus, Dioscoria, which um, feeds most of the world with, with their yams, with their wild yams. And there's about 600 species in the genus Dioscoria around here to honour it with its local Aboriginal name or Koori name. Uh, it's Wyong, just like the place. So oh, that's wow. why Wyong is named Wyong, and Wyonga means yam patch. These have up to 728 milligrams per 100 grams of ascorbic acid or vitamin C. So in a survival situation, you'd have your protein from things like these hakea seeds here. You can eat the insides of the hakea seeds. Also, of course, uh, your wattle seeds that I showed you before, very, very high in protein. But without your vitamin C, without your ascorbic acid from things like this wild lemon or these bush potatoes, um, you know, you, you would not survive because you, you'd, you'd die. We need around 60 milligrams per 100 grams of um, 60 milligrams per day of ascorbic acid or vitamin C and these have got nearly 10 times the amount of oranges. We've also got some dock, got some dock which will go really nice in the salad. Also you can um, you can blend that up and turn it into a, a dressing as well. This is what they sometimes call uh, bush tea or um, bush medicine out west. This is a closely related plant from the scavola and it's been shown to have anti-tumor properties and anti-carcinogenic. And, uh, and this so one, the leaf, or the, flower? Uh, the leaf and the yeah. flower, and the fruit, which I've got here somewhere. This is the native sarsaparilla fruit, not the one I'm looking for, but around 25 milligrams per 100 grams of vitamin C yeah. in those ones as well. So, really, really good for you. And high levels of sugar in the leaf, so that's why that goes really well in the tea. I can't find the fruit for that at the moment, but um, this should be studied again because the inland uh, version of this one, the inland species from the Scavola genus. Um, is well known and doctors out that way and pharmacists are even recommending on the quiet that people get stuck into a tea made from this, a bush tea or, or the bush medicine tea they call it as well. Anyway, how are you guys feeling about the challenge? Do you reckon <laughs> you could turn this into a fairly respectable look? Yeah, yeah, yeah. we've got lots yeah. of ideas already, so we, um, yeah, I think we can make a nice lunch for you guys. All right, excellent. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll give you the next sort of 10, 15 minutes to get stuck into it and then we'll, we'll just um, sit back and, and get ready to enjoy it. Yeah, nice. cool. All right, let's Excellent, do it. thanks. <laughs> Right, so, you ready? Yep, yep.